guys, how's it going? Kevin Cleary here with a comparison video for you. And today we're continuing with the Cold Steel theme for the week. We have the 8015 versus the Recon 1, both Cold Steel knives that I really, really like. Of course, the Recon 1 has been around for a lot longer, and I have loved this one quite a long time. That said, you may recall that I also had a custom 8015 and that I really, really adored that knife, although ultimately couldn't kind of justify having a knife at that price point in my collection. That said, this guy is very easy to justify, or much easier anyway. So, can the new cool kid on the block beat out the standard bearer for Cold Steel, the Recon 1? Uh, well, let's, let's go ahead and think this through. By the way, I'd love to hear your comments down below. How would you compare these two? If you, if someone held a gun to your head and said you could only keep one of these, which one would you keep? And that's how I'm going to conclude this video after I work way, way, work my way through these comparisons, beginning with size and weight. If you're not blind here, if you're actually watching this video while you're listening to it, you can see that the Recon 1 is clearly bigger. It's nine and a quarter inches overall, nearly four inches of blade, three and seven eighths, five and a half inches on the handle. It's about five ounces. It's just a little over five ounces and it's half an inch thick. The 8015, while being a little shorter at eight and five eighths inches and having a three and 11 sixteenths inch blade, which is a little less than three and three quarter inches, okay, by the way, it is shorter when closed, only five and one eighth, but it does weigh more at 6.5 ounces and it's also a fair bit thicker. I guess not a fair bit, but it's about five eighths of an inch thick, which is pretty stocky. All right, now my first sort of comparison that I always make is how comfortable is this to carry and how much sort of blade and, and usefulness are you getting for the amount of size and weight that you're carrying? And in that department, the cold steel, uh, the Recon 1, I'm sorry, absolutely takes the cake, right? You've got only five ounces for almost four inches of blade there. That's really, really nice. And so, yeah, the, the Recon 1 definitely carries lighter and more comfortably than the 8015, especially with the 8015 being as thick as it is. Now, uh, you know, you'll see that maybe there's a trade-off there when it comes to ergonomics, but our first criteria, definitely the Recon 1 takes it as being a little easier to carry and giving you an awful lot of blade and utility for that uh, weight that you're carrying around. Blades on these guys, we've got S35VN. In fact, both of these are S35VN. Both of them are flat ground. Obviously, this is a draw point. This is a clip point. Um, I have to say this. The Recon 1, by the way, there are going to be some Recon 1s out there that are hollow ground rather than flat ground, but I think the standard version these days, if you buy one that's produced in 2019, it's going to be flat ground, okay? Someone correct me in the comments if I'm wrong. Uh, the one thing I do know is it'll be DLC coated, which is either here or there. I like the satin, which is why I have here the uh, white... Wow, not White Mountain Knives, but Warriors and Wonders exclusive version, okay? So, the big difference I see between these two blades is that the Recon 1 blade is a little pointier, so if you really need that, then that may be a consideration for you. It's also a little thinner overall. So, if you do a lot of slicey type stuff with your EDC blade, you might be inclined toward the Recon 1. Although for most tasks, you know, let's say we were cutting down cardboard, you would be really, really hard pressed to notice a difference between these two. You're only going to notice it if you're, I don't know, cutting carrots or beets or something really firm that, that has a tendency to split with a thicker blade, okay? Otherwise, very, very close. And so I don't really, I guess, it depends on what you want, guys. This, this blade is a little stouter. You can see it carries a little more material out to the tip, slightly thicker blade stock. This one is going to be a little slicier and I'm going to call this part a tie because really I feel like it's up to your own preference which one of these you like better and I can't really make that call. I don't, I don't have a strong preference for one of these blades over the other. Next point is the lock. Oh yeah, triad lock versus scorpion, lo scorpion lock. Well, let's see here. Both of these are if very effective locks, very strong locks. But the big difference here is practicality versus cool points, okay? All of the cool points absolutely go to the Scorpion lock. What an amazing looking lock. Probably right now my favorite mechanism in the knife world. I just think it makes for such a cool looking uh, mechanical, I don't know, just, you know, 
such a beautiful design. I really, really like the Scorpion Log. I love the way it works. I love the simplicity of it. I especially love the really cool design aesthetic that it gives a knife. Okay, the Triad Lock, it's strong, no question about it. It's highly effective, no question about it. But it's not quite as cool as the Scorpion Lock. Now, which one of these is gonna win? I've gotta give this one to the Scorpion Lock, guys, even though I will not argue with anyone who says that the Triad Lock is really, really cool. The Recon 1 here is just a little stiff and not as comfortable. Now, if I had the 8010 here, this might be a little different discussion. And so you might wanna check, you know, uh, you might want to check the channel in a couple of days to see that video because that's coming up as well in the not too distant future. Okay, let's go ahead and talk next about the handles. All right, but we're going to move on from the lock, although this is going to come up maybe a little bit as we talk about the handles here. So construction on this guy is totally G10. We have backspacer with a lock back here and of course no liners. Very very comfortable, very grippy knife. It does allow you to choke up, although it's maybe not perfectly designed for that. Um, but I will say there's a lot going for the ergonomic comfort and the overall size and feel and grippiness of the Recon 1. Moving over to the 8015, I've got a little less real estate for my fingers here. The jimping is just a little sharp there, but I can choke up with a specific finger choil, which I do like, okay? Uh, so, which one is more comfortable? Well, look, guys, the Recon 1 is definitely a little more comfortable. Uh, which one do I like the look of better aesthetically? I definitely like the 8015 better in terms of how it looks. So, if you're an Instagram guy, you probably want the 8015. If you're going to go cut stuff in the bush, you probably want the Recon 1. Uh, I've got to, just for comfort alone, give this to the Recon 1 while saying that I totally appreciate the look of the 8015. Now, the question becomes, which one of these should you buy? Which one would I keep if I was for some reason forced to part with one of them where I just, I didn't have the option to keep both. I must get rid of one. I've got to say guys, just because of the utility of it, I would keep the Recon 1. Now, as a collector, as an enthusiast, as an Andrew Demko fan, if I was allowed to keep both, I would totally keep both. And if you're watching this and you've already got a bunch of knives and you want something different and interesting and you're trying to pick between these two, yeah, the 8015 is a very, very compelling option. And I can absolutely see as an enthusiast and as a collector why you would make this choice over this choice, all right? So that's how I think this breaks down. If I had to only keep one, yeah, I would take the Recon one. I'm really fortunate to be able to have both of these knives. And so for that reason, I'm going to keep both. I'd love to hear your comment down below. If you were really in that same situation, what would you do? The next thing I've got to say is thank you so much for watching. By the way, I got this from DLT Trading and they were really good about getting it up here to Canada. So I'll put a link to DLT Trading down in the description box below. Again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we will talk to you soon.